Students who have been protesting on the University of Toronto campus since May have until 6 o'clock tonight to leave. That is an order now by an injunction uh, granted to the University of Toronto to clear an encampment by pro-Palestinian protesters. The students want the school to divest from Israel and vow to stay until that happens. So today we're joined by Sarah Rasek. She's a spokesperson for the U of T encampment. She's been leading conversations around divestment. Uh, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm curious, are, are your plans to leave by six o'clock tonight? Right, so the judge has ordered for this encampment to be dismantled by 6 p.m. today. We, as a community, as students who have been uh, at the encampment for over two months now, are still engaging in discussion and in dialogue to figure out exactly what our next steps will look like. That being said, um, you know, we have cleared out um, valuable items uh, and personal items, but we are still deciding as a community, as a collective, what the next steps will look like. What time will that decision be made, given that you've got a six o'clock deadline? Hopefully uh, within the, the near future, the next few hours. Um, but as uh, you know, we decide what to do and as there are developments, we will be communicating that to the media. So the injunction is for the encampment, but the protests are allowed to continue. The university says they don't have an issue with that. What will the, the demonstrations then look like? Right, so the university had actually requested uh, for the court to also order that students take permission before protesting in the future, but thankfully uh, the court did not uh, rule on that. We would have hoped that in weighing, uh, that in weighing harm, uh, the, the harm of complicity in a genocide would have outweighed uh, and or been more significant than students protesting said complicity in the genocide. That being said, we will continue to protest and, you know, this encampment is only one tactic. Uh, we have built uh, really critical, crucial relations at this encampment and we will only continue continue to grow until our demands are met. Um, you know, there's a large group of people that are part of that encampment. Uh, what is your thoughts on if some people have de decided to stay, to go against the injunction and stay past six o'clock and others decide to leave? Right, so the decisions that we make are usually consensus-based, but we do have a shared agreement that um, even if we're not able to reach consensus, we will uh, all, you know, align ourselves with what the majority agrees uh, to do. Of course, all of this, uh, you know, the removal would be up to police. Have you heard anything from Toronto Police? I believe they put a statement out um, making it clear that by 6 p.m. they want to scan, and if not, that they would come in and clear us out. I'm curious about, you know, you've been there for two months. What's your reaction to the judge's injunction and what was said in court? Right. So in his um, in his ruling, the justice did make it clear that the encampment is not hateful. It is not anti-Semitic. It is not violent. Uh, he recognized that the slogans and the chants that be used, including, you know, from the river to the sea, glory to the martyrs, the phrase intifada, that they are, in fact, not anti-Semitic. Uh, he made it clear that the unsubstantiated incidents of hate that UFT had put forth cannot be linked to the encampment. And so at least he recognizes that, you know, this is a peaceful protest. This, this has been a peaceful protest. But ultimately, it is a shame that we are still being asked uh, to leave. Um, again, we would have hoped that in weighing harm, the, the harm of complicity in a genocide would have been more significant than students protesting said complicity, than Palestinian students protesting their tuition money being invested into weapons manufacturing companies murdering their family members. Uh, if not an encampment, then what could demonstrations look like in the days to come? Right, so the first Israeli apartheid week was on this campus 18 years ago, but it took for this encampment for us to even have UFD approach the negotiating table and utter the word Palestine. And so we know that this encampment has served as an extremely powerful tactic, and we will only continue to build momentum and to grow from here. Uh, we have been protesting since the genocide started in October, um, and, and we will continue doing so, um, you know, beyond this encampment. Again, the encampment is one tactic, and, and the movement is growing, and we have seen that uh, take place these last 62 days. The encampment was a dramatic demonstration, and by that I mean that it was really in people's face 24-7, what you were demonstrating was in front of people with this encampment now removed. Does this weaken your demonstration or your protest at all? Well, we think that, again, given the critical relations that we've been able to foster at the encampment, we are only going to grow from here. Divestment, um, you know, is a long-term, um, I guess, battle that, that we're now a part of, and we will continue pushing uh, and negotiating until we're able to achieve it, because it's not about if UFT will divest, it's about when UFT divests, and we will continue to be here as students, and we will continue to demand that UFT divests, and we will continue to push to hold them accountable to their own legal and moral obligations, which is to not be complicit in war crimes. All right, well, time is ticking on. I know that you were in those discussions discussing what to do before 6 o'clock tonight. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for your time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.